All available units, 211 silent, in progress, Pacific National Bank, 48th and Wells, 48th and Wells. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to episode two of Rated T. We're covering Three Fugitives today, the 1989 movie starring Nick Nolte and Martin Short, James Earl Jones, and Alan Ruck. A lot of big names. And today, joining me is Chase Willett. How you doing? I'm doing great, Brian. Thanks for having me. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right, so what do you got going on? Man, okay, so with COVID, um, I, I'm trying to use the additional free time to learn new things. So I've done an online screenwriting course, so that someday maybe you'll hire me for a job. And then I've been working on guitar theory since I've never, I play guitar, but haven't like learned the ins and outs of like theory. So got it, got that's it. kind of what I've been doing. All right, so yeah. you're a musician too, right? Yeah. So where can the people check out your music? Thanks. Um, so chasewilletmusic.com, I've got a new EP up there. Um, that's the best place to go. Okay, so the movie we're talking about today is Three Fugitives. Um, overall thoughts, what do you got? <laughs> so I was telling you this right before we started rolling, but in my notes at the eight minute mark, I just wrote, um, this is not good. And uh, so that was kind of my overall impression. A lot of like squandered talent, I feel like. In the movie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would have to say the same. Um, I have never heard of this movie before yeah. I started doing the research for this show. And it's kind of surprising that you have Nick Nolte, James Earl Jones, Alan Ruck, Alan very Ruck. young Alan Ruck. Yeah. Um, but after watching it, you kind of see why it's incredibly forgettable, I would say. Um, basic plot is Nick Nolte gets out of jail and immediately gets caught up in like a bank robbery yeah. by Martin Short. And he had just gotten out of prison for years of bank robbery and they mentioned yeah. like he's knocked off like 15 banks before right. he went to jail or something yeah like that. yeah and then it turns in uh just like a classic buddy comedy odd couple type thing and all the while they're trying to rescue martin short's little girl part of the reason that martin short goes and robs the bank because he's about to get kicked out of this house and they're going to take the little girl away from him so he's like desperate to rob the bank yeah yeah What's wrong with her? Don't know exactly. She's in this special school. Must have cost a fortune. This is yeah. a remake, by the way. Um, okay. The same guy who uh, directed the French movie yeah. directed the American one. So I didn't know it existed in the French version, the form of the French version before this one. I knew that the writer director was French, and so my theory was that there is a genre of like family friend friendly like slapstick French movies that like kind of work. In that context, maybe, and then he tried to translate it to an American right. film, so it just missed on yeah. like all levels. To me, just the third act, I think, is where it really falls apart. There's this part where they're driving to Canada, yes. and yeah, it it just fades in there in Canada. Which <laughs> yeah, literally, all they say is, "I know a shortcut." Yeah, <laughs> and it fades to black, <laughs> like we're about to go to some old commercial. Yeah. Like a Kodak commercial is about to pop up or something. Yeah. What are you doing? Shortcut. We'll be in Canada in 10 minutes. It seemed like the writers didn't know how to end it. We're yeah. just like, f*** it. Right. It's over. So let's talk about some good moments of the movie. Okay. Anything that you particularly liked. Okay, so the... The, the one thing that stands out to me, uh, I actually laughed out loud when Martin Short ran into the light pole, because he's not supposed to be looking at anyone in the eye when he's going to meet this contact, yeah. and he does it twice, and I think I laughed both times. Hey, hey. you all right? Yes, fine. You better watch where you're going, buddy. Yes. So I would say Martin Short, too. A lot of slapstick with Martin Short, and he gets the sh out of yeah. for the entire <laughs> yeah. movie. Yeah. Yeah. You okay? Or Al Capone here can tell. I remember thinking, like, I genuinely feel bad for Martin Short. And Same. <laughs> yeah. He gets, like, oil dumped on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just, like, a rag doll. I think the amount that he's <laughs> shook 
in the first 20 minutes of the movie, he could have CTE at this point. Yeah, by like the one good take they had. So if you imagine they did like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, five or six. Right, right, and right. If you watched episode one of Rated T, um, which was Dune, you will notice the same actor, Kenneth McMillan. Yeah. Um, he was the floating fat man in Dune and was in Three Fugitives, which was kind of weird. So, you know, give an applause to Kenneth McMillan. Uh, He's first. a Rated T All-Star. Rated T All-Star, very yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. So. But sadly, this was his last movie. Unfor- Is that right? Unfortunately, oh. he passed away and his last realize. movie was Three Fugitives. Oh, <laughs> God. What a horrible <laughs> way to yeah. go. All right. So, the tie to Tacoma portion of this movie, which there's a lot of. So, yeah. this is a rare instance where it was set in Tacoma. We're not yeah. one of those who was set in Seattle, but filmed in Tacoma. Um, starts off at McNeil Island, and then Nick Nolte takes the ferry and lands in Stillicum. They go from Stillicum to Pacific National Bank, which is the old city hall. And they give the address as 48th and Wells when they're making the call. 211 Silent, in progress, Pacific National Bank, 48th and Wells. I don't know if I'm just missing it, but I could not find Wells Street. But actually right across from Old City Hall is Spanish Steps. Yeah. And I don't know what it was in the 80s. I'm guessing it was still just the, the Elks Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Elks. It must have been. Yeah. Um, but the whole SWAT team runs down. The Spanish Steps. Whole SWAT team. Yeah. I I mean, like, such an intense response. But yeah, you clearly see the Spanish Steps, like, they're there for a while. And then the dance, it looks like it's a dance class that comes out to look at them. I think they're in the Elks Lodge. Right. Right, yeah. They come out to that balcony. Looking over the balcony, yeah. Yeah. And they come during this, I don't know what it was, but it was like this wood chopping yeah, 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 festival. Yeah. They wanted to make it look so northwest. Yeah, there's a little market by the bank yeah, where like guys are just holes. chopping down, uh, chopping down upright logs. I don't think they were turning them into totem poles. I think they're just hacking away at them. Right. Yep. And there's plenty of shots of you know Pack Ave. Yeah. Um, Tacoma skyline. You know, you see it like when they pull up to the vet's house, which was a cool looking house. I thought it was really cool. We yeah. should see if it's. Around. Yeah, um, there's some clear shots of Seattle. You see yeah, the Space absolutely. Needle, even, yeah. and, um, and they just kind of use them interchangeably. You know, they'll be driving Tacoma, turn a corner, and then they're in and Seattle. And then they're in Seattle, yeah. yeah or yeah. LA at one point. Oh, really? Know, so, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. So, and there's also a part there in Gasworks Park. In Gasworks Park, yep. Yeah. Yep. The little girl who, again, is like super fast, apparently, because they're always trying to keep up with her. Right. So fast that she runs from Gasworks Park to Tacoma. <laughs> to Tacoma. Very quickly. Yeah, you clearly see the church in the background. And then I think it's that same sequence when I thought you could see the Tacoma Dome. But you definitely see the clock tower on Pacific Avenue yeah. several times. Right. Yeah. So there's a couple places in the movie that aren't in Tacoma, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, first one I immediately looked it up was the King Salmon Bar. King Salmon Bar, Fourth and Water, as for Charlie. Pretty on the nose for yeah. Northwest. Yeah. yeah, another thing that kind of goes in line with what you're saying. Just... Yeah. And then Buswell Park. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been to Buswell Park here never in Tacoma? Been, never made it to Buswell Park. It looks beautiful. Yeah, 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 definitely. All right, so Chase, you give this three stars out of ten. Three out of ten, and I'm feeling a little generous. There's a lot wrong with this movie, even though it was set in uh, our, our favorite town. Yeah. And I would give it five, just because... It's so average. <laughs> average and forgettable are the two words I would use to describe this movie, which is unfortunate yeah. because of the names attached to it. Yeah, great actors. Actors I like even enjoyed watching in such a bad movie, but it it almost made it like just upsetting because I was like, you had these guys are great. The talent's there. The talent's there, yeah. and it's like not being utilized. It was yeah. it was disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, everybody. That is it for episode two of Rated T. We covered three fugitives. So stay tuned for the next episode. And it was great having you, Chase. Thanks for having me. Would Definitely. you would you recommend people watch the movie Tacoma Lovers? If you're a Tacoma lover, if you live in Tacoma, I would recommend it. But that is the only time. That's I would the only time. It. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, everybody. Take it easy.